Are you ready to save some time and a boatload of paperwork? Then this one is for you. Let's start by making a Google Form. So we'll go to New, More, Google Forms. Okay, so uh, we want to name the form. So that'll be the first thing we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to call this one, and there's the typing in, uh, science quiz. Um, the nice thing about the Google Forms is that it's really, really handy for gathering information. You can use it for quizzes. Um, you can do surveys for students, for parents. Um, I like to collect parent info, uh, email addresses, best contact information like phone numbers. Um, great to start a class you can do bell ringers with them uh, tickets to leave at the end of class um, i actually use it as an extra help method i have a link to an extra help google form on the website that i have so kids can ask questions that way and they don't have to feel like they're actually sending me an email because for some or for some reason they feel like sending an email is bothering me um, the other nice things about using uh, google forms is that you can set it up so that it grades things automatically with an app called Fluru, which I will show uh, in the next section of this um, Google Forms. Um, excellent formative assessments, as we said, you get a snapshot of their learning. You, you can quickly type up a quick question or survey or uh, anything you want to do to gather some data to see how they're understanding the material. Um, when you need to collect lots of information from people, either from a survey or students for quizzes, like I said, bell ringers, tickets to leave, parent information. Um, the Google Forms will take that information when people input um, answers to your questions and it can organize it into a spreadsheet. It makes it fantastic. Uh, and the fact that it can do that means you're gonna save all kinds of time, eliminates unnecessary paperwork. And once you create a form, you can reuse it. Um, it can be a, a starting point for different iterations for a quiz. So you don't have to start from scratch you'll already have it done. So the Google Forms is something that um, I really recommend that, that you use in your classroom. Um, so what, what can you do with Google Forms? Well, this one I'm just calling Science Quiz. So I'm typing in the title up here. And if you just click up where it says the Untitled Form, it'll automatically name that for you. Uh, form Description, you can put whatever you want over here. So this is just a sample quiz. Um, and then you have different questions that you can ask. Uh, ask. So you can add new questions over here. Uh, you can add different titles that will come up. Um, so if you wanted to have like special headers, you could do that. You can add images, you can add a video from YouTube. You can also break it up into different sections. Um, and when you add the questions, it, you have all kinds of choices for questions. Now I don't use all these, but you have all these kind of options. Uh, the ones that I use most of the time are multiple choice. Uh, short answer is good. Um, paragraph, I'm going to be honest, it's not really the best for paragraphs because your answers come in a cell and a spreadsheet and sometimes that's a pain in the neck to read. Uh, check boxes can be pretty handy. Uh, for surveys, linear scale, perfect. I use it all the time. Um, you can kind of play around with those when you're making your own forms. Um, so I figure what we can do is just kind of make a, a quick set of questions and then we'll see how this goes. Uh, the first thing that I always recommend uh, when you're doing this is uh, telling the uh, the class or the block so then it makes it easier to organize later on so I'm just gonna keep this one as multiple choice and so the first option here is one and then to go to the next one is gonna hit enter two three we have currently a four block schedule uh, the other thing that you can do is you can make this question required which means that they have to answer it in order to move on so that's an easy one that you want them uh, to be able to answer make that one required um, okay, so we want another question. So it's as simple as just hitting the plus sign. Add another question. Here's the next one. Uh, so maybe name is good. And you know what? This should probably be required. Um, the forms also recognize the put name. Automatically put it as a short answer. Right? That's one of the things that you can choose. By default, it comes as multiple choice. But we just put it as short answer, which is what we absolutely want. Um, the other thing that you may want to do, and it's kind of handy, is this little button over here, these three buttons. If we click on this, there's some other options. So description is, a, is kind of a handy one. So 
what you can do is you can put in uh, maybe something for clarification, something like, or a format, maybe you want last name, and then maybe you want first name. Um, and then when the students answer the questions, you'll be able to organize it and alphabetize it literally with just a few clicks of the mouse. Okay, so let's add another question. Uh, I think for this one, since this is a science quiz, I, I do teach science. We're going to do some science questions. We'll do just a couple. Uh, how about which of the following is a vector? Question mark. So we'll keep this one as uh, a multiple choice. So we'll click down here. How about speed? Hmm, what else? Uh, velocity, distance, and time. So one of these is the correct answer, and we're going to pick which one is the correct answer. This one over here is our correct answer. Um, we could click, uh, click this over here and make it the answer if we chose to make this as an actual quiz. Um, I'm going to show you that we're not going to do that. I'm going to leave this one as not required in case a student wants to skip it. That's completely up to them. Uh, let's add another question. So it's as simple as adding this plus sign. Uh, let's see, a vector has magnitude and dot dot dot. Uh, what we want to do for this one, I'm going to also make this one a short answer question. Um, and again, because these, maybe they don't know the answer, we'll leave this one as not required. And also when we preview it, we'll see what that looks like after. Uh, I'm going to do another question over here. Uh, let's see. Driving in a circle is an example of acceleration. So I'm keeping this one as multiple choice, but I'm going to make option one true. And option two is just simply false. So it, it says multiple choice, but you really have just made uh, a true and false um, question. And once again, not making this one required. Um, so we've got three different questions over here. We want to see what it looks like. Well, one of the things you can do is you just click on this little preview button and the new window opens up, hopefully fairly quickly. Here we go. And so here's the name. This is what it is. It's a sample quiz. You can type in more or less if you'd like over there. The star means it's required. So the students are going to have to pick this. They're going to have to type in the name and they see that it's last name, first name. And now they've got these three questions. Uh, when they're done, they hit submit and it goes right into the spreadsheet. All right, so we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's close that part. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can add different sections. So if I click here and we add a section, we can now add a, um, a title to this section. So maybe this part is a survey. And within that section, we can also add other questions. So let me just show one other one. Again, you can put a description here if you'd like to. Um, the, the question I'm just going to ask is science is fun. Now for this one, instead of doing multiple choice, we can do these for some suggestions, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but here's one that I like when we are doing um, surveys is the linear scale. And so what will happen now is they'll see this question as science is fun and they'll have this linear scale. Uh, one, two, you can pick however many you'd like. This just goes one to five. And then we can put some options for different labels. Uh, so option number one, boring, science is not fun. And then for this one, uh, yippee, science is fun. Okay, so let's go back and we'll do our preview. And we've got our science quiz, block, name, those are required. And then these are all of the sections. So let's just, to go to the next section, we have to click something here. And for this one, we'll just do, um, this is my name. And we don't have to answer any of these. When we hit next, it goes to the next section. And so this is where the survey part of it is really handy as well. Because now they've got this science is fun and they just click whichever one that they want. Very nice. Uh, they would hit submit. We're not going to do that. We're just going to get rid of it. And yes, we want to leave the page because we're just doing this for practice. So what are some other things that you can do to personalize the Google Forms? Well, you can change the colors if you like. Uh, I tend never to really do that, but that's perfectly up to you. 
Um, you can also change some of the settings. Uh, you can collect email addresses. I like to do that anytime I'm uh, giving any type of an assessment or gathering or collecting data from the students. I'll collect their email address. Uh, if it's a quiz, uh, you can limit it so they can only respond one time and they don't have a second chance, or you don't have to do that. They can change their answers afterwards. Um, the presentation part, I like this part over here. Th this comes up by default. Your response has been recorded, uh, but you can put whatever you like, like, you know, thanks for playing. Uh, and so when they hit that submit button, this is what they will actually see. Um, shuffling the question order is sometimes handy, especially if it's a quiz. So then, you know, if they if someone is looking next door for doing this um, in class, they, their questions will be a little different. Progress bar, I almost never use that one. Um, as far as making it a quiz, you can actually make this a quiz clicking on here uh, and you can put in uh, the answers, which is what I tried to do earlier. Um, I, however, use something else for correcting Google Forms as a quiz, which I will show um, in part two of the video. Um, once you have all your settings done, you hit save and it's ready to go. Um, the other thing that you may want to do, which I recommend at this point, is when you click on responses over here, um, you have this button that says accepting responses, or you can have it so that it's clearly not accepting responses. Um, and so if it's a, a time event, maybe it's an extra credit question that you have on um, that online or something that you want the kids to answer before they take a test or something, uh, you can have it accepting responses and then once it's time for the test, you know, time has expired and you can clearly turn it off. Uh, we also have some other options over here. If you wanted to, you could have this checked off just by clicking it. And anytime uh, someone adds a response, you'd get an email notification. I personally don't like to do that because you'll get emails all the time depending on how many are there. So I'm gonna unclick that one. If you wanna reuse one of the forms that you've done in the past, uh, this is super handy. Uh, the questions will still be there. You delete all the responses and it starts over again, which is pretty handy. Um, Okay, the other thing is this button over here is your new spreadsheet. So when you click on this, I always like to do create a new spreadsheet. And what will happen is the name will be science quiz, which is what we named this form, and then it will just have responses next to it. And so when we hit create, we got our new spreadsheet. And so timestamp, it'll have the time and date when they took it. Um, it'll have the block, whatever they picked. So you can actually organize by the block. Then you can have it in the name, uh, by the name, and we had last name, first name, and then you'll have all their answers that are right over here, right? So super handy. Uh, and when you look in the drive, um, it's right next to it. So we get science quiz, and then we've got the responses. And uh, it just, it's really handy to have. So now that we have this, um, we have this Google form and we wanna share it with somebody, either we wanna email questions out to parents or students, or we want to use it in our class as a quiz or a bell ringer, ticket to leave, whatever the case is, um, we have this send button over here. Uh, the send button is a way that we can share. So when we click on the send button, we have some options. We can email it out to people. I tend to not use this one because you'd have to have all the email addresses. Um, this is the one that I use most. And what happens is it creates a link and this link is really long, it's obnoxious. But what you can do is just shorten it and that's uh, a nice shorter link. If you wanted to make it even shorter, you could go to like bit.ly.com and it'll shorten it, squish it, so it's really, really small. Um, you can then use this to embed in text if it's in an email or you could copy and paste it, you could project it on the board. You've got all kinds of options for that. Um, collecting usernames is handy. Sometimes schools will have different uh, user accounts for the students. Uh, so there you have it, give it a try. Um, go through the different types of questions that are over here. Uh, you can practice making some sections um, and you kind of just have fun with the Google Forms. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show what do you do once you get all the data that's collected. Thanks for watching.